Welcome to this lecture on the last topic in unit number three. This is about what we call the generalized inverse or the Moore Penrose pseudo inverse of a matrix. And this is applicable not only to square but also to rectangular matrices. Now let us uh, just look into this general idea. The inverse of a matrix A can exist only when A is non singular. However, many situations have come up recently where some kind of inverse should exist even for rectangular matrices. So to accomplish this particular demand, then uh, the mathematicians have come across uh, what is known as a generalized inverse, which is also called by the name pseudo inverse. So it may not be the exact inverse in the classical sense, but it gives us a fairly good inverse uh, so that uh, the applications can be uh, thought about. Now, in linear algebra, Moore Penrose inverse is most widely known as a generalization of the inverse. And the beauty is it is uh, it is existing for any kind of matrix, not necessarily square, so even defined for rectangular matrices. And the Moore Penrose inverse is a unique inverse. Now, the Moore Penrose inverse is of a matrix A denoted by A plus, and then it is given by the formula A transpose A whole inverse into A transpose. So you will have to make sure that A transpose A inverse exists because there's an inversion involved there. So A transpose A uh, should be positive definite. That is a very, very necessary condition for the existence of the Moore Penrose inverse. So the Moore Penrose inverse A plus is given by A transpose A whole inverse into A transpose. So as we find A transpose into A, we check for its positive definiteness, either through eigenvalues or other methods. So let's get into uh, this particular paragraph where we say the purpose of constructing a generalized inverse is to obtain a matrix that can serve as an inverse in some sense or the other for a wider class of problems. Now, when we talk about experimental data and store them in matrices, there could be situations where uh, uh, redundancy could be there and other issues. But suppose we would like to uh, build a system, a very large system AX is equal to B. And then there is every likelihood that man, uh, systems with more equations than unknowns, which are called overdetermined systems, can suffer from inconsistencies. So in that case, this generalized inverse or the pseudo inverse can be used to give us the so-called uh, solution of best approximation in the least square sense. The least square solution of a system of equations heavily depends upon the generalized inverse. Now let us take this uh, example where we have a matrix A and then we try to find out uh, a transpose into A and uh, once we find out A transpose into A, we can uh, find out the eigenvalues of that just to ensure that it's positive definite and then you just simply construct the pseudo inverse A plus as A transpose A whole inverse into A transpose. So these are very simple procedure uh, which does not require any elaboration. Uh, but as I told you, you must be extremely cautious to see if A transpose A is positive definite or not. The moment it's positive semi-definite, then the inversion is not possible. Therefore, we cannot have the generalized inverse in those cases. Now, this is a smaller example. And then by the same procedure, we just find out A transpose A 
and then check for its positive definiteness and then we get the pseudo inverse and then finally here is an example where we take a system of linear equations uh, you can see that there are three equations uh, and actually only two variables should have been there x and y so that makes it uh, over determined and then uh, we find out uh, we try to find the uh, approximate solution of this particular uh, system first we calculate uh, uh, the matrix a transpose a and then uh, we find out the generalized inverse that is a plus as a transpose a whole inverse of a transpose and then we find out the approximate solution vector as x is equal to uh, a plus into b that is pseudo inverse into b and then we get 2 by 3 comma minus 2 by 3 as a solution vector so uh, in this case it may not exactly satisfy all the equations because this uh, can only be the least square best uh, solution uh, therefore some errors would be there but that error would be the minimum between the actual uh, solution which is hidden from us and then this uh, approximate solution so wherever uh, we have uh, no idea about the exact solution of an overdetermined system the uh, pseudo inverse provides us a very very important approach to get the approximate solution similarly apart from svd we also have the qr uh, decomposition which can also give us the least square solution and the solution uh, obtained through QR and um, the more Penrose kind of pseudo inverse will be exactly the same. So a student has got both choices before him, but when you uh, apply it through machine learning, then you'll have to look into the storage aspects and accordingly the suitable algorithms will have to be selected. So if you want approximate solutions of overdetermined systems of equations, you can use the pseudo inverse or the generalized inverse as well as the QR decomposition technique uh, for getting some sort of solution.